Hello, you beautiful people. Today we are here to talk about my fantasy teams that I drafted. I tried to record them live, but there was some some of them were slower drafts on sleepers. Some were, there were some guys that didn't show up, and there was an auto draft in one of my more taco-ish kind of leagues. But overall, I just wanted to give you guys an overview of how my teams look this year. I'll be giving you guys updates throughout the season on like waiver wire players I'm targeting, trades I've been making, and just overall just kind of keeping you updated on my fantasy project progress. Before we begin, as always, don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to. And now we'll just kind of, you know, casually sit down and talk about my teams. Apologies if the audio is a bit out of sync with the clicking or whatever when I'm selecting players. I'll try to sort it out the best I can, but I don't know how to use a computer at all because I am an, an idiot. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get into it. So this is my first team. This is a 10-team league. A few guys that from a, the Discord that have, we've had a league going for a while. So this is the Samuel Legacy League. And the picks on here don't exactly match up because we drafted on Sleeper just to give everyone time to do it and then transfer the picks over. But I have written the actual picks down of where I got these players. So my first pick was Tyrese Halliburton. I got him at pick number 8, which I'm pretty happy about. I think that's around where he should be going. I think he's very clearly going to finish as a top 10 player this year, averaging around 50 fantasy points. So very happy with that. Next up, of course, you know, I had to grab me my boy Sabonis. I mean, I literally talk about this guy in like every video, not too much to say. I had him at pick 13. And then moving on just down the thing, we have Pascal Siakam at 28, which I think is some pretty great value for Siakam. I'm a bit higher. I'm thinking he should go a little bit in the lower 20s. So definitely content with that pick. I should also mention that we did this draft a lot earlier, like before the season started. So there was some trades that hadn't happened yet. Some I hadn't really completed my ranking. So I'm, I kind of regret some of my picks, but we'll get into that as we get to them. Next up, Fred Van Vliet at 33. Again, I'm happy with that. I thought he's ranked criminally low. I mentioned him in my sleepers video. I, I think he should be going in 30s to 40s range. And right now, on average, he's going in the 60s. So definitely happy to get him there. And then moving on, we have Drew Holiday at 48. Excuse me. This is a pick I definitely regret. We drafted this before the Celtics trade happened. So he was still on the Bucks at the time of recording. Not at the time of recording. At the time of drafting, sorry. So not the best value for him. But what can you do? Shit happens. I don't think it's the worst, but it's still, I, I just feel like I could have got some better value at the spot. And then I have Zach Levine, who I got at 53. I think that's some pretty decent value on Zach Levine. I think he should be going a little bit earlier, but not like an insane amount. I have him ranked around there approximately, so happy with that pick. And then we have Dinwiddie at 68. And Dinwiddie is someone who I was a lot higher on before I did my rankings, but just kind of seeing Ben Simmons integrate back into the lineup made me more hesitant on Dinwiddie's usage if he's going to be like averaging the seven assists that ESPN's predicted and what I was kind of expecting. So I'm really just not too sure how the Ben Simmons Spencer Dinwiddie pairing is going to be working out. Dinwiddie is someone that I think easily could average high 30s, but he also could average low 30s, and it's kind of going to be difficult to tell until the season starts, but definitely kind of a situation to monitor, and I will kind of keep you guys updated on my thoughts. And then again, I drafted Brooke Lopez at 73. Again, this was before the Damian Lillard trade. I think Lopez's value, I don't think it dips too much. Maybe it dips slightly. I'm not like super stoked with this pick, but I do have him around there in my rankings. I'm just kind of second guessing myself there. But I, I mean, it's whatever. I needed a center. He's a solid center, big man to get at that position. Moving on, Michael Porter Jr. got him at 88, which I am happy about. I, th I have him ranked around the 80s, so I think that's a good, solid, small forward to get. I think he had a bit of a down year last year. There were some injury problems. I think to this year he should be a little bit better, averaging around 32 to 33 fantasy points per game, so happy to get him there. Wendell Carter Jr. was my next pick at 93. I don't know. I I I was a lot higher on Wendell Carter Jr. last year. I had him in my sleepers video as the thumbnail player, and he did have some good games towards the end of the season. But he was dealing with some injury shit that was pretty annoying. I don't know. I'm I'm still high on him, maybe more than I should be. But I mean, if I getting him around 93, I'm perfectly fine with that. Then we have Daniel Gafford at 108. And if you watch my rankings video, I did have Daniel Gafford ranked at 100, so I am happy with his value. I think he is going to have some pretty good run with like this, with the starting lineup. He's kind of a good per minutes per minute per game averager, if that makes sense. Especially with Tyus Jones, Jordan Poole, I think he's going to be playing around you know high 20s in minutes. I think he's going to get the block shots, the rebounds, the points that every hyper athletic big man that is not like incompetent and gets minutes should be getting. And then these next four picks, like I said, this was before I did my rankings. We did this draft a while ago, so I'm not too happy with them. There's definitely better players that I could have grabbed, and I'm kind of regretting this even looking at this now, but I, anyways, I got John Collins at 113, and I'm not too mad at that one. He is someone that I'm kind of taking a chance on seeing a big leap in value now that he's off the Hawks. I do think he'll be a bit better on the Utah Jazz, but how much better, that kind of remains to be seen. I don't know. The, like ESPN's kind of predicting that he'll be averaging around 15 and 7, as you can see here. 
I'm not too sure if he gets into the high 30s, but I mean, I feel like he could maybe average 30 fantasy points per game this year. And it, for getting him at 113, I feel like that's pretty solid value for that upside. Next up is Kyle Anderson at 128. He did have boosted numbers last year with Carl Anthony Towns missing some time, but getting him in the 120, like late 120s, I still feel like it's decent value. He kind of gets a sneaky source of assists on the Timberwolves, so interesting to see how that's going to play out. But for now, I'm not too upset about it. And then I have Colin Sexton at 133, and the Utah Jazz are just weird because they kind of have like a lot of guys that could be averaging low 30s in fantasy points per game. Obviously, Laurie Markkinen is the main guy, and then it kind of I'm. Not really too sure who's going to be like that secondary score because you have Clarkson, you have John Collins, you have Sexton. So it's kind of those three players that they're going to have to like sort of fight it out and see what the hierarchy kind of looks like over there. Obviously, you have Walker Kessler, but his scoring doesn't really impact his fantasy value too, too much. You're mostly looking for the defensive stats and rebounds with him. Oh man, excuse me, just had some dominoes. It's fucking my stomach up, so that's why I keep burping. But anyways, you get that high quality content on this channel as always. But yeah, that's that's this 10 team. Not super happy with it, like I mentioned. This is why I recommend sort of doing your drafts as close to the season as you can. Because it's not like a huge deal, but I did draft Brook Lopez and Drew Holiday before that trade happened. And then I think that trade impacted both of their values slightly. So it's just better to wait until as close as the season as you can. So you don't have to deal with kind of bullshit trades like that. Where you couldn't have really known any better. So anyways, that's going to do it for the 10 team. Now we are on to my 20 team. This is again with some guys from the Discord. The 20 team, I don't. if you've ever done a deeper league, you know when those last picks start coming in, man, it is just hell. Like, you, you were just scraping the bottom of the barrel looking at guys that are barely even in the league at this point. You just want anyone that gets minutes. So, yeah, again, none of the draft positions line up, but I wrote them down. So just kind of ignore what it says on ESPN. We just had to input them off Sleeper. Highly recommend using Sleeper if you need to draft, but you're not, if you're all, like, not living together and you can't coordinate times. It's just a good way to sort of give everyone time to do the draft, and then you can just put it on ESPN or Yahoo afterwards. But yeah, first pick was, I had pick number 17 in this draft, and I went with Trey Young. I am happy with getting Trey Young there. I had him a little bit lower in my rankings. I mean, I, I don't really have too much to say about him because I think he's going to be pretty similar to last season, which was, you know, one of the best fantasy players in the game, so can't be too mad. I had him ranked at 14, so this is pretty on-the-nose value for him. And then next up, I had Jimmy Butler at 24, and while I did have him ranked there on my rankings, there I, there is just... When I'm in these like deeper leagues, when you're in like a 16 to 20 team league, I like to be like ultra mega cautious because if one of your, you pretty much get like five ish good players and then a bunch of bums. So if one of your good players gets hurt, you're kind of screwed. So Jimmy Butler, he did play in 64 games last year. I know people like to think that he's like a hospital kind of player, always getting hurt and everything. But I mean, if I can get 65 games out of a star player, I'm perfectly happy with that. We all know when he does play, he's he can put up like 50 fantasy points a night. It's just like whether he's going to. And then next up, I have Tyrese Maxey. He was my next pick at 57, and I think that's pretty decent value for Tyrese Maxey. I have him ranked at around 51, so can't complain there. And now with this James Harden situation, I'm thinking about making an update on like preseason takeaways because with James Harden skipping those practices, I'm not really too sure. I kind of want to articulate and elaborate on my thoughts on that in a separate video. And I also want to talk about Victor Wembenyama because holy fuck, I'm pretty sure he's like skyrocketing up my rankings. I'm a lot more sold on him now than I was. I like to like wait a little bit, but just off of like scouting and eye test for those games he was playing in the preseason, I'm, I would not be shocked if he leads the league in blocks. I'd, I wasn't sure how well he was going to translate in his first year, but I mean, I was very impressed. And I, I def Let me know if that's something you guys would be interested in hearing my thoughts about down below in the comments. But yeah, moving on, Dinwiddie again, got him at 64 this time. I don't know, dude, like I, I just talked about him, so I won't go into too much detail. But yeah, definitely a situation to monitor there. And this is the problem. Like these are like my kind of my four picks that were like pretty decent. And then after that, you're all you're in the hundreds for every pick. So then I got Gafford again at 97, which you know I'm happy about. Christian Wood, since I did draft a riskier player, I kind of had to take a flyer because I wasn't too happy with my first four picks. Because Christian Wood is someone that I could see having like a pretty decent season, but he's also someone that could just be shit and not even get the minutes. Very much a big, more of a risky player that I only picked because I wasn't happy with my first few picks. Definitely remains to be seen, but yeah, at 104, I mean, I, I kind of had to take the risk just because I wasn't too happy with my team, and he might screw me over, he might not, remains to be seen. Next pick, I actually am very happy about, I got Osir, Tom, I might be pronouncing it, Osir Tom, one of the Thompson twins, I gotta stop trying to pronounce eight names, man, I just butcher them every time, apologies. But yeah, I got him at 137, he is someone that I am considering to be more of a sleeper this year, I was very impressed with his defensive abilities in the preseason, I think he could be getting some steals in there, I think he's gonna be getting some solid minutes, he was a hyper athlete, looks like he had a good motor on him, maybe he gets a few rebounds, a little bit of scoring in there, and for getting him at 137, I can't complain, I think he could be 
a little bit of better than people are expecting. ESPN's projecting him to average around 23 fantasy points, but I, I could see him getting maybe to the 27-ish kind of range, so decided to take a flyer on him. But again, this was like way before the season started, so I hadn't like fully fleshed out my the analysis of all these guys. Then next up was Kyle Anderson. Got him again at 144. I just talked about him again. I, I, the mo- notice how in both of these drafts, I, I drafted some pretty similar players because I wasn't too confident on the later rounds because I hadn't really done my research yet. So next up, I keep saying next up. Sorry, I keep saying the same shit, man. I'm, I'm so rusty at recording videos. It's terrible. But yeah, Jairus Walker. This was one I wasn't too sure about because I was kind of looking at the Indiana Pacers power forward position and I was like, it's either going to be Jairus Walker or Obi Toppin that kind of is the primary like starter get, getting the minutes and putting up some decent fantasy value in the later rounds. I drafted Obi Toppin in that other league and he was already taken in this one, but it, it looks like they might start Jairus Walker. I'm really not too sure if the Pacers are going for like develop young guys or start the better player right now, but it definitely remains to be seen. He looked okay in the preseason i'm not completely sold on him i watched some of his college highlights as well i don't i'm really not too sold to be honest but i mean at 140 at 177 there's not like there's that much better so i just kind of decided to take a risk on the rookie but yeah as as you can see from a whole i'm not super happy with my 20 team league definitely one of my weaker 20 team drafts i've ever done could have been better there then we have Tim Hardaway. I got him at 184. I mentioned him in my sleepers video. I think he's someone that, like, if you can get him at the end of drafts, I mean, even just look at his game log. Yes, there's games where he puts up, you know, like, the 20 fantasy points, the 11 fantasy points, 15. But then there's also, like, the 61, the 43. He's capable of big games. He's just kind of inconsistent scoring. But he is the third option on the Dallas Mavericks for scoring. He's going to be getting a lot of shots. Well, I mean, not a lot of shots, but a decent amount of shots next to Kyrie and Luka. So... Oh, I think someone just crashed right across the street from me. What the fuck? So, I guess that happens. Living in a city is wonderful. I guess I, I'm just going to keep recording at this point. <laughs> Whatever, there's a fire truck and a cop there. But, I mean, well, look at that. You get a live crash in the middle of a video. Only, only on the Basketball Philosopher YouTube channel. God, this we are just so unprofessional here. I need to learn how to edit these. Anyways, complete sidebar tangent. Got a bit distracted by a car accident. Um, next up, we got Dwight Powell, I guess. <laughs> This is so goofy. But yeah, I got Dwight Powell at 217 just because I was looking at the Dallas Mavericks again. They're starting center. Like I said, this was a while ago before the preseason and everything. So I was kind of unsure who their starting center was going to be between Holmes, Dwight Powell, or Derek Lively. It looks like it's going to be Derek Lively, but for now, I'll just kind of... At the time, I was like, yeah, maybe Dwight Powell would be good. I don't know. So I just picked him, but it looks like Derek Lively's going to start. So my Powell pick might not pay off, but I kind of, you know, in the 20 team... You got to take the risks where you can. Apologies if you hear the sirens and stuff going on. I don't I'm, I don't even know what's going on, man. What is life? Anyways, I guess I just had a hard-on for the Dallas Mavericks at this point because I didn't even notice I drafted Jaden Hardy right after them. I, I'm always very impressed with Jaden Hardy when I see him play. It's just that he doesn't have the minutes because of like Kyrie and Luka. You don't really need his scoring. You kind of need some 3 and D kind of players. But I do think he's kind of worked his way into the rotation a bit more after a strong outing, few strong outings in preseason. I think he could have a very solid season this year, so I, I wouldn't be too surprised if he, you know, gets a few, not like six-man role, but if he can get like in the high teens, maybe low 20s as the season progresses, in a 20 team like I mentioned earlier, you're really just looking for value wherever you can get it, and as I mentioned, I got him at 224, so not too bad, and then my last pick, I mean, this is just like a waiver wire streaming spot at this point, I got Cody Martin, I don't really think he's going to do anything if at all like look at these stats it's absolute bum i just kind of drafted him and was like fuck it i'll get someone off waivers i'm eyeing eric gordon just because i I know i'm i think eric gordon can be a decent little player on the suns i was higher on him before they got grayson allen that was the only thing that made me hesitate on picking him up so i'll keep you guys updated on how the waiver wire is looking on uh, my 20 team progress but yeah overall not super happy with my team i definitely should have done more research before the season started But yeah, next up, this is my final team. I just drafted this right before the video started, and I was going to record it for you guys, but some of the guys were inactive or late showing up, and I had to pause. It was a whole thing. But yeah, this is a league with a few buddies of mine from back home. It's more of a casual league in the sense of, like, most of these guys aren't super into fantasy basketball, but we've been playing it for, like, four or five years, and there's always hilarious picks. And it's it's just a good time, you know, playing fantasy with your friends, talking shit. It's always fun. So the draft just happened, and my team is stacked. This is another 10-team league, and I mean, I'm so happy with this team. Some of the players that, like, fell to me are just absolutely insane. So my first pick, I had the fourth pick in the draft. 
and I was going to go for Embiid because I was higher on him, but I decided to go for Jason Tatum, and this is primarily because, you know, I'm a Celtics fan, and also I just moved to Boston, so I'm, like, going to be trying to go to a few games. Those tickets are so goddamn expensive, though, but I'm going to try to go to some when I can. So I was like, you know what, fuck it, I'll get, to, I'll get Tatum, then I can go yell at him in person if he fucks up or is bad or anything like that. So I thought it would just make the games more exciting. I mean, as if they're not going to be exciting anyway, but you get what I mean. I thought it'd be fun. Anyways, next up, I had LaMelo Ball. I got him at 17th. No, what the fuck am I talking about? Oh, yeah, never mind. No, it was 4 and then 17. Yeah, sorry. I was tripping for a sec. Yeah, LaMelo Ball was my next pick at 17. I'm pretty happy with that value. I have him ranked 11th. And to get him at 17, yes, there is the ankle injury risk from last year. But I, I do think that it was kind of a one-time thing. I'm not convinced he's going to hurt his ankle again necessarily. And, I mean, he's just some solid value. I couldn't really let him slide at 17. So very happy with that. My next pick was Pascal Siakam, who I talked about on one of my other teams here, but I'm super happy to get him. I got him at 24th. That's roughly around where I had him on my rankings. And I just like having guys that are the number one options on their team because it's, I don't know, you just kind of know you're going to be getting a lot of value on them. So I got three number one options here with LaMelo Ball, Jason Tatum, Pascal Siakam, and I got another one coming up as well. So very happy with this draft so far. Obviously, it was a great first three picks. Next up, I got Carl Anthony Towns, which was good because I know I needed a center. Carl Anthony Towns kind of had a down season last year, but I mean, I got him at 37th, and on my rankings, I had him at 26th, so definitely some good value for me here. I was just trying to decide between him and Fred Van Vliet, who was my next pick. Ended up going with Carl Anthony Towns, and then miraculously, Fred Van Vliet fell to me again. So super happy with Fred Van Vliet. If you watched my sleepers video, you know that I included him in here, but I got him at 44th, which to me is absolutely perfect value. I have him ranked in like the high to mid-20s. So I'm very happy with this like slide to me. I think that's going to help my team a lot. Very like literally couldn't ask for a better start to my draft. And then my next pick was Paul George. He's someone I hadn't planned on drafting, but I mean if Paul George falls to 57, I was like I feel like I'm I'm very happy with how my team's looking so far. I really liked my first few picks. I was like whatever, I'll take the riskier pick in Paul George because he does have the potential to average, you know, in the 40s for fantasy points per game. It's the games played that's mostly the concern, but I was like I mean the value is too good for me to pass up on. I tend to be a more cautious fantasy player, but I was like, ah, fuck it. we got to go for Paul George. And then, boom, another player from my sleeper video. I'm telling you guys, when I put the sleeper videos out, I draft these players myself. Nick Claxton. Got him at 64th. And if you watch my video, I mean, that was people were drafting him in, like, the 70s. I have him ranked at 54 in my video, so in my rankings, sorry. So 10 spots of value there for me. Was super happy that I was able to grab him. Because, like, I was just so confident in my team at this point. I liked every single pick. I got great value on most of them. And I was feeling I was feeling on cloud nine. I'm not going to lie. Then next up, it was Anthony Simons. Got him at 77th. And this is... A, Anthony Simons is someone that I'm pretty high on this year. I think he probably is, like, him or Scoot Henderson are averaging the most fantasy points this year on the Blazers. And I talked about Anthony Simons in another video. I think in my Sleepers video, actually, I brought him up. Because I think he's a sneakily underrated source of value i had him ranked at 70th and i drafted him as i already showed at 77th so not too bad a little bit of value there for me and then my next pick this one i really was not planning on it was kind of like i was looking at it for a player i couldn't find them for some reason i didn't just google it the timer was running out i panicked and i wasn't like i was eyeing rudy gobert because i didn't think it was a bad spot to draft him by any means i have him ranked 77th i drafted him at 84 so definitely not the worst, but I just didn't want to have, you know, I feel like I have a lot of players, as you can see, that are on the same team, which isn't a big problem because I only have two from each team for the most part, but still, I kind of just wanted to spread it out and, you know, distribute, and I also didn't want to have Carl Anthony Towns and Rudy Gobert, but, I mean, at the end of the day, it's kind of whatever. Hopefully, Gobert can average, like, low 30s fantasy points per game, not to, expecting too much, and I, I mean, like I said, not to the worst place to get him. I was just looking for, like, an Aaron Gordon or a Michael Porter Jr., and I just couldn't find them. And also, I for some reason, I just, like, completely blanked on the fact that Bradley Beal was, like, still on the board somewhere around here. I think he was on the... Oh, he got taken right before or after Anthony Simons, and I definitely would have preferred to have Bradley Beal. I just kind of had, like, a brain slip and just was not paying attention. That kind of came back to bite me, so... But it's all good. Moving on. Boom. Ben Simmons. Another riskier player, but I mean, I thought I got him at 97th, which I mean, like, you can't really pass on that. I had him ranked 86th. The upside is a little bit too high to be getting him at 97. Like, to me, that's just insane because let's say he's uh, underwhelming, he gets hurt or whatever. It wasn't one of my earlier picks. Like I said, very happy with the start of my team. And I mean, he can definitely get into the low 30s in fantasy point per game average, which I think is pretty solid to get around the 100th pick. 
And then these next two picks, I just, like, could not believe. This is what happens when you play in a more casual league. Like, if I'm playing in my other two leagues, like, there's no way these guys fall to me where I got them. I actually couldn't believe my the, my second pick that I'm going to be talking about. But first up is Mark Williams. I got him at 104th. If you watched my rankings video, I kind of talked about Mark Williams a lot because I think he is going to have a lot better season this year. I had him ranked 89th. I, I've talked about him a ton, so I won't go into too much detail. But playing with Lamelo, it looks like he's going to be getting 30 minutes per game going to have some high rebounds high blocks decent points it's a kind of a similar situation to Daniel Gafford where if you give these hyper athletic big men minutes you're just going to have some good fantasy value it's kind of as simple an equation as that he looked pretty good to me last year had some decent games in the preseason looked like a block machine as well so hopefully he kind of outshoots ESPN's projection for him on blocks as well and overall I think that could be some low 30s fantasy point per game output so I'm very happy with that and then my absolute favorite pick of the draft I was literally sitting here just praying that my dumbass draft mates were not going to take this guy. Literally don't know how this happened. On my rankings, I had him 88th. I got Shaden Sharp at 117. Sorry if the S's there were terrible. Into the mic. But yeah, Shaden Sharp at 117. I mean, what more do I really need to say? That is just crazy value. He is someone that I think is going to see a big leap in his production this year. I was very impressed with him last season, especially towards the end of the year when he started getting some more minutes and opportunity. But yeah, I think the Portland Trailblazers are really going to let him and Scoot Henderson and Anthony Simons off the leash this year. So we could see some very high fantasy output from Shaden and just getting getting him that late in the draft. I mean, like, come on. That's kind of one of those, like, league-winning picks if it plays out. So I absolutely had to grab him. Very happy about that. And then for my very last pick, I got Jabari Smith Jr. He looked a lot better to me in preseason. I got him at 124th. I got him at 100. I got him 124th. And yeah, I don't know what it was. Like last year, I was like, hmm, maybe like going into the season, but I wasn't sold. As you can see, he kind of started to pick up the consistency towards the end of the season, averaging like high 20s, low 30s. But yeah, he looked a lot solid. His three-point jumper looked a lot better. He was looking, he was doing some posting up, taking some shots in the mid-range, hitting some difficult shots. Obviously, you don't want him taking them all the time, but he looked a lot more comfortable on the court, if that makes sense. I was, I don't know, I kind of liked what I was seeing, so... Kind of remains to be seen, but on my last pick, I decided to take the flyer on him. There wasn't too many better options, and I mean, I usually like to have a waiver streaming spot anyway, so worst case scenario, I just kind of uh, take out Jabari Smith Jr. and use him to stream guys. So, But yeah, overall, these are my three teams. Very happy with this team in the Taco League. I think this team is just absolutely stacked. Looking at my other 20, my 20 team, as you can see, is kind of shit. Hopefully, I'll try to make some trades. There's not really too much on the waiver wire, but maybe I can turn something around there. And then my other 10 team is okay, but, you know, we just did the draft a little early. I wasn't fully prepared, and the later end was kind of meh. But, yeah, that's going to do it for the video. Hopefully this helps you guys out and kind of, like, com you can compare your teams to it. Let me know what your teams are looking like down below, what your thoughts are on any of these teams, all that good stuff. And, as always, don't forget, go do something you like today. Go read a book. Go outside. Go on a walk. Take care of yourself. Maybe do some chores you've been putting off. Just do something that will make you feel good. Don't just spend the whole day on your phone, guys. Let's go enjoy life. So anyways, thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you all have a great rest of your day.